Welcome to Unit 3. In this unit, you're going to learn about closures in JavaScript. Closures are one of those concepts in the JavaScript programming language that's commonly perceived as fairly complicated and advanced, and that discourages people who are learning JavaScript from even tackling, right, attempting to tackle. Uh, but hopefully in this unit, I will disprove that idea, and I'll tell you that closures are fairly simple, and they are actually everywhere. Whether you know it or not, whether you are explicitly using it or not, closures are a part of the JavaScript programming language, and they are there whether you want it or not. Uh, so we're going to start this, this unit with learning what closures are and how they affect the functioning of the functions that you write in JavaScript. And then we're going to write some code which uses the concept of closures. We're going to look at a pattern called the module pattern, which very, intelligent, very intelligently uses the concept of closures and does something that the native JavaScript programming language doesn't have as a feature. To explain what closures are, let me give you this example that we've already looked at in the exercises video. So let's say I start with var a equals 10, which makes a the global variable. And I'm going to create a function called outer, which has a var b equals 20. Okay, And uh, b is now in the scope of outer. And I'm going to create a function inside the outer function. And I'm going to call that inner. Okay, So I'm going to create a function inner, which is inside outer and I'm going to print console.log of a and console.log of b inside the function inner and I'm going to call it. Right? I'm going to call inner inside outer. And finally, I'm outside of the outer function, I'm going to call outer itself. So basically, I'm calling outer. Now outer executes and inside outer, I have to find a function called inner and then it executes inner. So when inner executes, these two are printed. Now, can you look at the code and guess what gets printed on the console? It's obviously 10 and 20, right? So here, the variable a is being read, and there is no variable a inside the function inner. There's nothing inside outer. It goes all the way to the global scope, and then gets the value a, which is 10. Similarly, b, there's no variable b inside inner. So it goes one level up to the scope of outer, and it finds b declared over here with a var b. So it's going to take that value and it's going to print 20. So it should print 10 and 20. So let me copy this to the Firefox scratch pad and execute it. Okay, I'm going to paste the same code here. I'm going to right click, reload and run. There you see 10 and 20 printed on the console. And we've looked at how this works. The compilation step creates the scope chain and the interpreter is actually looking at the scope chain. So when the interpreter is executing lines seven and eight, it knows exactly where the A is and it knows exactly where the B is. Now it knows that this is referring to this B and this is referring to this A. So this seems fairly simple, but this is where things get tricky. Now let's look at the function inner. Now where is the function inner declared? It's declared in the function outer, okay? And where is inner executed? It's all it's executed in the function outer as well, okay? So it's declared in the function outer and it's executed in the function outer. It's kind of executed in the same place where it's declared. But now question the question that I have for you is, is it required for a function to be executed in the same place that it's declared? Well, no. The concept of JavaScript having first class functions means that you can take a function object and pass it around and execute it somewhere else, right? So the function could be executed in a completely different context and completely different scope from where it was declared. So let me convert this to a function expression first so that it becomes more obvious. So rather than it be a function declaration, I'm going to make this an anonymous function and then make this a function expression. For inner equals this function. Okay, now I could say inner open close, in which case it's exactly the same as what we did before, but that's not what I'm going to do now. What I'm going to do is instead of executing the function, I am going to return it. My goal here is to execute this function outside the context of this function, the function where it's actually declared. It. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to return it here, and then I want to execute it somewhere else. All right, so now that outer is returning a function, I'm going to hold on to that return value in a variable. So I'm going to say var inner function equals outer. Okay, now inner function is going to get a value which is this function object because this is what the execution of outer is going to return. See, we're returning this here, which happens to be this function. 
So when outer executes, it's going to return that function and then inner function is going to point to this function. All right. Now that inner function is a variable which contains a function, I can execute it like this. All right. Now, let me ask you this. What should get printed if uh, line 17 executes? All right. So all this thing happens, line 15 executes and you get the inner function back. And now I execute the inner function. What should get printed? Let's reload and run. First, let me clear this out. And I'm going to reload and run. Well, 10 and 20 get printed, which kind of seems obvious because, well, that's what was printed before as well when you executed inner directly. Now, what you're doing is you're doing one extra step, taking it into a variable outside and then executing it. But here is the thing you need to remember. There are two variables being printed over here, A and B. What's the scope of A? A is a global, so I can access A over here from line 17. What is the scope of B? B is in the scope of outer, which is over here. Now, when outer executes, B is valid, right? Over here, line 15, you're executing outer. So B has a scope from this to this, all right? So anytime inside the execution of outer, if you were to access B, you would get hold of this variable B. But now you're cross line 15 and at line 17, there is no function outer that exists anymore, right? It's just a declaration. It's not executing the function outer. So if it's not executing the function outer, it's just executing this anonymous function, how is it possibly able to print B? Because B is in the function scope outer, which doesn't exist anymore. Well, the reason it works is because JavaScript has the concept of closure. So what you're seeing here is closure is in action. What happens is when JavaScript creates the scope chain, Right? We've looked at how the scope chain works and how the compiler uh, creates all these different objects in the heap which knows what the scope is. What JavaScript does is when it creates a function, no matter where it is, right? maybe it's a function declaration or a function expression, when it creates this function object, it also remembers the scope chain when that function was declared or when that function was assigned. Right? So here there is a function, an anonymous function object created over here and it's assigned to inner. Now what gets assigned to inner is a function object that contains not just the function itself, it also contains the scope information. So it remembers everything in the scope at this point of time when that function object is being created. At the time the function object is created, there is a var b, which is 20, and there is a var a, which is 10, right? It knows that there are those two variables. And the thing is, it remembers it. So no matter where you pass this object, right? You pass inner here, you execute it completely outside, or you give it to some third party library, it doesn't matter. That function has a snapshot of the scope chain. It knows where each variable is that it needs to point to, okay? So it always knows B and it always knows A, no matter where you take it, right? This could be executing in a completely different file, right? That file may not even have a global A, doesn't matter. The function, inner function, the object, always knows where to go to access those variables. And when I say snapshot, you need to remember that it's not really a copy of those variables that it, it has. It has a pointer to the actual variables. So no matter where you send this function, it's actually pointing to the exact same A and B that you see in this code. So if it were to modify the variables, it would modify the exact same variables. Okay, so it doesn't create a copy of these variables. It's pointing to the same one copy of A and B. This is how closures work. So what you're seeing here is actually a closure. The definition of a closure is a function which remembers its scope. Okay, so we talked about the lexical scope in JavaScript, right? We, all the things that we looked at for scoping, how it knows what different scopes are, the global and then the outer and then the inner, it, exact, it works exactly the same way, okay? So it's just that the function remembers that thing and it remembers it even if the function is being executed in a different scope from where it is declared okay so what the function remembers is the scope during the time of the declaration and that's what it remembers if you were to take it outside and execute it somewhere else it does not matter it still holds on to it okay so that's the concept of closures